Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the C++ series. Last episode we learned how to work with some of the various forms of control flow, the if statement and the switch statement. Now I can teach you how to repeat your code with loops so your code can loop over and over if it wants to. The loop is another form of control flow though because you can still control the flow of your program by making it repeat as many times as you want. And yeah, so the first type of loop I'm going to teach you is the while loop. So we'll just put while loop right here. The while loop is pretty cool. You can have your program repeat a block of code as many times as you want to while a condition is met. Very similar to if statements though, except of course the code is being repeated not branched into multiple directions. So to make a while loop, all you gotta do is type while, and then inside of these parentheses here, you're gonna put the condition that um, tells the program whether it needs to repeat or not. So it looks like my thing is messed up, so just go ahead and press the insert button, I believe. Yep, the insert button to fix that. And so inside of here, we're gonna put a condition. We'll just say, as, well, we need a variable first. You don't have to have a variable, but if you want to. So usually you're going to have a variable, but we'll just do integer uh, var1 is equal to 45, okay? So our condition is going to be if var1 is equal to 45, then you're going to run this loop. So this means that whatever is inside of these, you know, code block, um, these curly brackets here, um, this is, well, I call this a code block because whatever is inside of here will make a code block. But um, whatever is inside of here, inside of these um, curly brackets, that's going to be what's repeating in the loop, okay? So as long as variable 1 is equal to 45, then this is going to repeat as many times as it is 45. So if it ever changes to something else, if the variable ever changes to 43 or something like that, then the loop will stop repeating and it's just going to move on to the next line of code right here, okay? Um, so let's just put something inside of here so we can see that it's working. We'll just say um, the number, we'll just say a variable is equal to 45. Excuse me, I'm trying to burp. Okay, inline like that. And then after that, we can put um, whatever. Well, that's it. We don't have to put anything else if we don't want to. So, okay, let's just try this out. Click run here. And if this is true, of course, it's just going to loop over and over. Okay, so as you can see here, if we look at the console, it's just spamming variables equal to 45 over and over and over, and it's never going to stop unless we shut the program down by clicking the X here. So that's just, um, you know, what happens whenever you have a loop that is never changing, or a condition inside of a loop that is never changing. So something that you must remember is that if the condition that makes the while loop repeat never changes, it's going to run forever, for eternity. So typically when numbers are involved, simply have it so the number changes each iteration. So let me just show you an example of that. Let's make an entirely new example. So integer number is going to be equal to 1000. And so while number is bigger than 100, then you're going to loop here. So we're going to say see out the number, oops, I spelled number wrong. The number is bigger than, than 100, okay? In line. And then after that, we'll just say number minus minus. And this would be the same thing as doing number is equal to number minus one, okay? That's another um, way to do that, just number minus minus. And then number plus plus would be number is equal to number plus one. It's just a quick way to go down by a certain number. Okay, so what that's gonna do is as long as number is bigger than 100, it's gonna loop over and over and spam this into the console. But each time the loop is running, also it's being subtracted by one. So each time the loop iterates, um, this is an iteration by the way, so each time the loop iterates, it's just gonna um, go down by one. And so eventually it's gonna get lower and lower, right? So then it's gonna get lower than 100, so the loop is not gonna be true anymore. The condition is not gonna be true anymore. So the loop is gonna stop running and then it's gonna go here. So let's just go in and say loop is done running. So we know that it worked, so loop is done running. And remember, this line of code right here that I'm making is not gonna run until the loop is done running because that's how code works, is line by line. So think of this as one whole line. Until this is done, this is not gonna run, okay? So it has to finish doing this and then it'll come to this. So let's just try this out. So it's spamming numbers bigger than 100. Oh, I forgot to print out the number. I wanted to do that. So we're just gonna print out what the number is so we can see what it is inside the console in real time. Okay. Boom, now it's saying number. And then as you can see, it's going down if we scroll up all the way. Um, well, it's gonna take a while, but. So as you can see, it's just going down, right? And as it's going down, it's just telling us the number, of course. And then eventually it's gonna to get to 101. So then when it's 101, you know, it's right here, it's printing out the numbers bigger than 100, and it's gonna say 101 right here instead of, instead of num. And then right after it puts that, 
into the console, it's going to do 101 minus 1, as you can see here. So number minus minus. So now the number is going to be equal to 100. So it's going to loop back to the top, and it's going to say while 100 is bigger than 100, that's going to be false, right? So it's not going to run again. So in case you're confused why 101 it doesn't run again, is because of course right after it prints that out, it's going to minus by 1, and 100 is not equal to, or it's not bigger than 100, it's equal to 100, right? So it's no longer going to be true. And then right after that, it's going to say a loop is done running. So that's pretty simple, right? So as a very simple example, this is usually what you want to do whenever you're working with loops. You want to make the loop, um, the condition of the loop change over time so that the loop doesn't run forever because of course you can have different circumstances and stuff like that. So that's a good example. So let me just show you another example here. So this time let's just pretend like we're running a game here. This is like a little game program. So we're going to do another example and we'll say uh, we're going to have a character here. Character again is equal to Y. So I'm just going to type all this out and then I'll explain right after I do that. So um, character again is equal to y, and then while um, again is equal to y. Remember when you're checking to see if something's equal, use double quotes, I mean double equal sign. So, oops, don't need that, okay? And so inside of here, we're just gonna do C out plays a game, okay? In line like that. And then we'll see out do you want to play again type y or in don't worry I'll explain this right after I'm done like I said and so after that we're gonna ask for their input if they want to play again so the way this works is pretty simple oops we used to see out instead of seeing so the way this works again is pretty simple all it's doing is it's running a game here we're pretending like we're running a game and then after they're done playing the game it's going to ask them do they want to play the game again yes or no or why or in because we're using characters right so if they type yes or why then it's going to run the loop all over again because if it asks for the input from the user if they put y that means that again it's going to be set to y i mean it's already set to y by default but if it's set to y and it still is y, then it's going to say y is equal to y, so that's true, and it's just going to run all over again. But if they put in, that means that again it's going to be equal to n, and so n is not equal to y, so that's going to be false, and then it's going to move down here. And if it ever gets down here, we'll just say, thanks for playing. Thanks for playing. In line, okay? So let's try running this real quick to see if it works. So it says, plays a game. Do you want to play again? Yes or no? I'm going to say no, and then it says thanks for playing. Let's try again to see if the loop works. So do you want to play again? I'm going to type yes, and then now it says play a game. Do you want to play again? Yes, 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 yes. You can go as many times as you want until you're done playing. Then you press N, and then you're done. So as you can see, it's a simple program that lets you choose whether you want to play again by typing yes or no, Y or N, right? So if you look closely, we can see that we already have a variable, or the variable that we made here is specified as Y even before the loop is running, right? So this may confuse you because the user has not even played the game yet and we're making them say yes already. The only reason we are doing this is so the program can run at least once. And because the program runs at least once, the program gets to play the game at least once. Or the player gets to play the game at least once, I mean. If the again variable was in or nothing at all, if this was not y, then the, the loop here would never even run because it would not satisfy the condition here. So that means that the player cannot even play the game in the first place. That's the thing with while loops. They need to have the condition satisfied to be able to run at least once. So to fix this problem, there's another loop extremely similar to the while loop called the do while loop. It's very cool. So I've seen the while loop used more in programming, but the do while is definitely important to know for certain situations. The way it works is basically the opposite from the while loop. Instead of the condition being in front of the code, like the while loop, it comes after the, the code being repeated. So it's just better to show you, so let me show you. So we're gonna do do, and then inside of here, this is gonna be the code that repeats. So let's go ahead and put integer num1, num2, and let's make another variable in front here. Don't worry, I'll explain how this works in a second. I always do that, don't forget. Um, so then after that, we're going to say C out, give me two numbers to add. So this is going to be a simple program that is able to add two numbers that is given to the program through input. Let's get rid of that. Um, so we're going to say C in num1, I can't type, num2, and C out numbers added num1 plus num2 in line. See how would you like to run the program again? Question mark. Type yes or no. It 
cn run again okay so so like i said this is going to be a program that asks the user for two numbers and it's going to uh, add the numbers together and then it's going to tell them what the um and it's going to tell them what that addition equals what the output of that is and so after it's done running that and it tells them the number then it's going to ask them if they want to if they want to run the program again so they could you know add more numbers if they want to so they can type yes or no if they want to do that and if it's yes that means that we want to run the program again so we need to add a while statement here and we're as and the condition inside of here that we're going to put is run again is equal to yes. Okay. So before I explain this further, let's just run it to see if it works here. Let me just show you how it works really. Come on. There we go. So now it says give me two numbers to add. I spelled, well, I forgot to put an S right there. But anyway, um, we'll do four and then we'll do five and that's nine. So it says number added equal to nine. So would you like to run the program again? Type yes or no. I'm going to type yes. And then it's got to ask for more numbers. So three, four, seven. And uh, yes, uh, five, five, ten, good. So I'm done now, so I'm gonna press no. And then there we go, it's done running, okay? So the way this works is, since the condition here is behind the code itself, that means that the condition is not gonna be checked until the code is, is done running. So that's pretty cool, right? If you think about it, the condition is not being checked till after this, so that means that the code is gonna run at least once before it's repeating. So the way this works is, this is gonna be the condition that asks the user if they wanna repeat the code, basically. And so if this is satisfied, then it's gonna repeat the code. So therefore, the condition is only to determine whether the program um, needs to loop again rather than at all. So the program is going to run at least once since the condition is behind the code. OK, so don't forget that that's the main difference between while loops and do while loops. The um, while loop is going to need a condition satisfied to run the code at least once. But with a do while loop, the code itself is going to run once. Then it's going to ask the with, with then what the condition is going to ask, basically, if you run, if you want to run that code again. OK. So that's pretty much it for um, loops here, while loops at least. There's more loops we can go over next episode. I believe next episode we're going to be going over the for loop, which is pretty cool. Very common, even more co common than while loops. Don't forget that each time the loop runs, is it, that's called an iteration, and then a loop itself is iterating. That's just another terminology for you to learn. Um, so that's pretty much it, like I said. So if you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below. Um, if you want to join our Discord, there's a Discord link, so you can join our Discord. It's in the description, by the way. But if you want to join our Discord, you can do that. You can hang out with us, ask questions, whatever you want to do. And if you have Nitro Boost, by the way, or Nitro, Discord Nitro, go ahead and boost our server. Wink, wink. But anyway, um, all the code from today's episode is going to be in the description below, so make sure you check it out and bookmark it for future use. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.